YouTube. This is Tyler Manhood Weatherman. Hopefully you guys are doing all right. It's been a very hot one for a lot of us today, and that does not look like it's going away anytime soon, unfortunately. Sadness. But anyway, before I get into the video, I also want to say I appreciate the uh, recent the bleh, wow the recent the recent um performance of these videos. How we've been uh, basically crushing it on the numbers so far. Like it's honestly unreal to me so I mean it's not amazing but this channel is growing I, I, and it's clear to see and I just want to say that I appreciate it and love it if you guys would keep that up in the meantime though I do have weather to talk about so we're gonna get right into that we have a ongoing severe weather event going on in the Northeast and towards the mid-Atlantic and then we have a few storms that are starting to fire towards the Missouri Valley we went over a lot of this last night, so basically we're just going to do a little brief touch-up on this, but we also have an upgrade to a slight risk for tomorrow in a very interesting area, so we will talk about that. Took a quick look at the storm reports. We have uh, quite a few wind reports so far, and about thir we have 84 wind reports. We have 33 hail reports, one of which is significant, leading to a total 117 so far. But this event is still ongoing, and not too long ago... They actually have a uh, Maslow discussion that was issued about 25 minutes ago concerning a locally higher tornado threat. So we'll have to be really watchful, watchful towards uh, northern Pennsylvania for the next couple of hours particularly. I'm not super familiar with uh, the cities in that area or towns, so forgive me, I don't know any name. I can't name anything off the top of my head at the moment. So I do apologize for that. But if you're anywhere towards north central Pennsylvania, I would definitely be watching this line of storms as it's progressing through the area. I wouldn't rule out a brief spin up or something more significant. All right, so now that we've done that, we will look at the slight risk on Friday and it's towards the southeast and stretches all the way even towards the Delmarva. We have the uh, the Atlantic coast here, even the mid-Atlantic coast is involved. We have Richmond, Virginia Beach, you guys are in play. Charleston, Wilmington, can't rule you guys out. And even Savannah, you guys are in line for some potential severe storms. Then we stretch a little bit further inland. We have Raleigh, we have Columbia, we have Charlotte, Roanoke, and Richmond. Well, Richmond, I already said anyway, but you guys are in the slight risk. This even stretches towards my hometown in Atlanta. We also got Chattanooga, Tennessee, and eastern parts, and then like the eastern sliver of Tennessee as well. A little bit more of southern Virginia, and maybe even a tiny little piece of West Virginia as well. The marginal risk stretches all the way to the Georgia-Florida border, and then stretches all the way even further west back towards the Missouri Valley. We also have two marginal risk areas. We have one that's towards uh, Montana and Wyoming. We have Glasgow and Billings in play for them, and then Sheridan and Casper, Wyoming in play. And then we have a, an extra area that's popped up here. I didn't see this one yesterday, so we actually have now Idaho and parts of Montana in play as well, including a small little piece of Washington as well. These are all pretty marginal threats. Tornado threat is practically non-existent. And I say practically because you can never say never. I don't ever want to say never because watch it happen when I do say never. But the wind and the hail threat are the main stories, especially the wind threat for the southeast. Most likely going to be an MCS type setup, just like it's been over around this region for the last few days. Still going to be very hot, so this is not really doing much for that unfortunately uh, so anyways let's just go right into the radar here not gonna waste too much time on this video today I gave you a 25 minute video last time I'm pretty sure you're tired of hearing me talk <laughs> so here's our line of storms here it's actually moving in a little bit more of a traditional direction more to the south and and uh, maybe south and east I would say South, southeast. And here's our uh, weather system that's going to the northeast right now, bringing in some severe weather. 
this will all dissipate by the overnight hours and then here's our MCS that is going through the Missouri Valley it's working its way towards the Ohio Valley but it sneaks its way south and this is going to be our system that causes some more storms to fire this does look like a conditional setup once again so this could turn into a deal where if you just happen to be under a pop-up storm you could see some severe weather otherwise it's going to be maybe cloudy but relatively clear and then on Saturday there was a marginal risk issue but I'll go over that tomorrow and it's not really a super considerable threat if anything from what I've seen recently on uh, the trends here is I think the severe weather threat might be starting to slow down which is great news a lot of us are very weary when it comes to that we've been hoping for a while that this would happen a lot of the weather community wants a break from it <laughs> but anyway let's take a look at the let's take a look at the low level jet see what we have going on around central uh, Pennsylvania this is really going to be the only impressive thing that I may end up seeing on here so far anywhere around here these are just winds behind this current storm system and you might see a little bit of activity towards Missouri Valley but not much move this along and there is a small little spike where we get to about 40 knots right around north central Pennsylvania over the next couple of hours we'll have to watch that close but beyond that there really isn't much there to be had it's a little bit of energy that pops up around here I don't really think it still will amount to much if anything I think this might be behind the storm system but we go into the afternoon hours energy just isn't really there and normally during the time when you would expect the low level jet to increase is towards the late evening and overnight hours and we're seeing it dissipate actually if anything all we're seeing is stuff behind the backside of storm systems and unless there's any thunderstorms there to take advantage of the uh, environment around areas like this this doesn't really mean much not if you're looking for anything like tornadoes or anything, I should say. You'll get some wind out of it, but that's about it. Oh boy, now my computer's freezing. Oh, it's time to update Chrome again. That's just lovely. All right, so we move into Saturday. You may have to watch the Northern Plains. I'm not entirely sure. I don't really, I don't really think there was much in, much in the way of severe weather to talk about there. Last thing we're going to look at is the Capes, and that'll be the end of it for the for tonight of course with things starting to slow down of course we're going to go back to our normal schedule where we have the weekend forecast you almost have you almost got a 10 minute video out of me I think I'll try and keep it under there I mean as expected around this region during this time of year given the amount of heat and uh, amount of moisture especially towards the Gulf states the uh, Cape values, especially the mixed layer Cape, is going to be off the charts. We're talking, I mean, it normally takes a thousand joules per kilogram to produce thunderstorms, and we're about three, four, some areas even five, maybe even, I may even find an area around here that's about six times over the limit, who knows. So any storms that pop up in this area always will have a chance to maybe go severe. So we move this along, and it's always around uh, peak heat hours of the day towards the uh, south in particular is where our threat for thunderstorms increases the most. And this threat's going to linger for a little while, all the way through the weekend, and then maybe towards the uh, Midwest, we'll have to watch for more pop-up storms on Saturday night into Sunday, early, early Sunday morning. But we'll hash those details out in a later video. But this is all I got for you guys. Kept this under 10 minutes. I'm going to try to keep this under 945. But this has been Tire Metalhead Weatherman. I'll have the weekend forecast for you tomorrow, and I will see you then.